In this video, we're going to be configuring ICE as the RADIUS server to be used with VPN access on the ASA. Before ICE will accept any RADIUS requests from the ASA, we need to define the ASA as a network device in ICE. Usually what I like to do when I'm configuring a new device type or access medium is that I like to create a de network device group for this type of device. That way I can use that network device groups and policies later. To do so, I'll navigate to Administration, Network Resources, and Network Device Groups. I'm going to click Add and add a new group named Firewalls and put that as the, under the parent group of all device types. After that's done, let's navigate over to Administration, Network Resources, and Network Devices. Then I'm going to click Add to add a new network device. I'm going to name it ASAV. And the IP address is going to be the ASA's inside interface. And I'll go ahead and add it to the firewall network device group. After that, I'll check the box for radius and enter my radius shared secret. Now let's go ahead and save this new network access device. Now we're going to go ahead and configure our authorization policy elements. First, I'm going to navigate to policy, policy elements, Results, Authorization, and Downloadable ACLs. ASAs support regular downloadable ACLs just like switches do, so we can create an ACL here and use it in our authorization profile that we'll later use in our policy. I have a few of these ACLs built already, so I'm going to click into Employee Only, and you can see here that it allows everything except traffic to the 10.10.10.41 address. When writing downloadable ACLs, we can also check the current status underneath to make sure that the syntax is correct. For this video, I'm going to copy my employee-only ACL and name it Domain Users. Now I'll need to create an authorization profile to place this ACL in. An authorization profile is a collection of results that are granted after a successful authorization. These are used as part of the access policy. I'm going to navigate to the Authorization Profiles on the left-hand pane, and then click Add. I'm going to name this Authorization Profile VPN Users, and under Common Tasks, I'll check the box for DACL and choose the Domain Users ACL that I just created. On the bottom of this Authorization Profile, there's the Attribute Details, which are the raw AVPs that will be sent to the network access device. Now let's go ahead and click Submit. Now that I've added the network device and created some of the policy elements, let's go ahead and create this policy. I'm going to navigate to Policy and then Policy Sets to start creating that. I'm going to create a new policy set on top, and I'll name it Acme-VPN. I have to create a top-level condition that must be matched for this policy set to be evaluated. For the condition, I have only one VPN connection profile, so I'll have this policy set evaluated whenever we see a RADIUS request from a network access device in the firewall network device group. For the allowed protocols, I'm going to choose the default network access list. This is just a built-in allowed protocol list on ICE. If you wanted to get more specific with the allowed protocols, you could create an allowed protocol list with just PAP ASCII, and that would work for VPN. Now let's go ahead and save this policy set. And let's go ahead and expand it. There's not much I need to change on the authentication policy if I don't want to. The default rule is to evaluate authentication requests against all the user identity stores, which basically means any Active Directory users or internal ICE users. If I wanted to, I could change it to just Active Directory, and that would work too. I'll just leave it as it is right now, though. A successful authentication does not necessarily mean access there has to be a corresponding authorization rule that grants access. Expanding my authorization policy, we can see that there's just one rule, the default rule, which is deny access. I'm going to go ahead and create an authorization rule above that default rule, and I'm going to go ahead and name it Domain User VPN. The condition I'll use for this rule is if they're a part of the Domain Users Active Directory group. If they are, the result or the authorization profile that they will receive is the VPN user's authorization profile that we created before. So let's go ahead and save this policy set. Now we need to test it. Before we do, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the radius live logs and then minimize ice. And let's go ahead and pull up our VPN endpoint and attempt to connect for the first time. 
Since this is a new user connecting to VPN for the first time, we're going to have to have AnyConnect installed. Let's navigate to the outside in interface of the ASA using our browser. I'm going to log in with my AD credentials. And before we can proceed, my banner pops up. I have to click continue to move past it. Now we can go ahead and click the button to download the AnyConnect client for Windows. Should just take a moment and let's go ahead and launch this install. I'll just click next right through there. So now that that's finished, let's go ahead and go to the start menu and launch AnyConnect. The AnyConnect VPN client is already pre-filled with the IP address of the ASA's outside interface. If we install a public or trusted identity certificate on the ASA that the endpoints trust, we won't get any certificate error. However, if the ASA is using the self-signed identity certificate like it is right now, you might be blocked by a setting when initially trying to connect and you will receive an, an untrusted certificate error no matter what. To ensure the connection isn't blocked for your lab, go into your settings on the AnyConnect client and make sure that the Block Connections to Untrusted Servers option is unchecked. We'll still get an untrusted certificate error, but we can still connect to the VPN at that point. So let's go ahead and connect to the VPN using the AnyConnect client. I'll click through that expected certificate warning, and then I'll go ahead and enter my AD credentials to authenticate. And of course our banner pops up and we have to accept it. And it looks like we're now connected to the VPN. So let's go ahead and test this out. So my ICE server is behind the firewall, so I'm going to try to navigate to it using my browser. So it's 10.10.10.21. Looks good and it looks like we're able to get in. And taking a look at AnyConnect, I can go ahead and pull up the settings again and look at the route details, seeing that the routes to 10.10.10.0 .10 are there. Since our DACL in our authorization profile is supposed to block 10.10.10.41, which is my wireless controller, I'm going to try to navigate to it in the browser. I shouldn't be able to connect to it, so let's see. So it looks like it's just spinning there, so that's good. It's probably not going to connect. But I want to go ahead and dig into this a little deeper. So let me go ahead and pull up PuTTY and try to SSH to the ASA. Give me a moment. Oh, looks like it failed in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into this. So I'm going to dig into this a little deeper from the CLI. I'm going to issue the show VPN session DB AnyConnect command. And this should show me my AnyConnect session. From the output, we can see the protocol used during this session, the encryption algorithm, group policy, username associated with the session, assigned IP address, and so on. Now I'm going to issue the show access list command. And we can see the per user access list of IP domain users. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my VPN session. And let's go ahead and go back to the Radius Live Logs. After refreshing the Radius Live Logs, I see my authentications. So let me go ahead and click on more details here. We can see which authorization rule and authentication rule it hit. We can see that it has a tunnel group name of Acne VPN. Now let's say you have several different tunnel groups on your ASA and you don't want to create a policy set that covers all of them, or maybe you want to get specific in that actual policy set. We can actually use the tunnel group as a condition either in the authorization and authentication rules or the top level condition itself. Let's go ahead and navigate back to policy and policy sets and I'll show you an example of this. I'll just modify the top level condition to give you an example. We'll add a new condition. And the dictionary will be the Cisco VPN dictionary. And I'm just going to do a search for a tunnel group. And 
name. And I'll just change it to contains because it tends to be a little bit more accurate that way. And I'll go ahead and type out acne-vpn and click save. So if you wanted to sp specify specific tunnel groups, you could either add them to the top level condition in the policy set or in the policy set, or you can actually have individual rules that break up the different tunnel groups in the actual policy set. And with that, that brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.